Hello my beautiful girls! I am so happy that you are here with me today watching this video. We are talking about how to stop feeling jealous. I'm going to help you overcome it, switch it into a state where you are feeling good, you are feeling happy and complete on your own. Everyone who's watching live right now, welcome! I'm so happy you're here. We are going to talk about jealousy and then I will take all of your questions and chat with you for a bit. So, you know the drill. I have my kombucha in my notes. We are ready to go. So. Your feminine energy can thrive when you eliminate jealousy. That is why I am making a whole video about it today. There are many, many parts to jealousy and I really want to dive in deep and do the inner work with you in this video so that you can get to the root of jealousy and eliminate it forever. So if you feel that you are constantly feeling jealous of women who have a better body than you, who have the relationship that you want, who look the way that you want, are living the life that you feel you don't have, and you're having feelings of jealousy, it is okay, it's normal, now I'm going to help you shift out of it. The reason why is because it is extremely dangerous for you to live in a state where you are constantly jealous. It is because it gives you a very low vibration, it disconnects you from your feminine energy, and it blocks your blessings. So there's three dangers that jealousy causes when you constantly have it in your body. So there are people in the world who do not experience any jealousy anymore. And this might come as a surprise to you, but it is true. I have not felt genuinely jealous of another person in a couple of years. Yes, feelings might come up close to jealousy, but I've learned how to rewire my brain to eliminate jealousy, and I'm so excited to share it with you too. So step number one is learning why it's dangerous. When you know why it's dangerous, you are more incentivized to get rid of it. So as I mentioned earlier, jealousy majorly lowers your vibration. If you haven't seen my video, your number one feminine energy power, I highly recommend you watch it because I explain how your vibration and your frequency works so that you can understand how to be happy, how to be magnetic, and how to be attractive. Your vibration, everyone has a scale of energy around them. They're operating at a certain frequency. You either have a low, a medium, or a high vibration. Feelings down here that cause a low vibration are feelings such as guilt, shame, sadness, anger, and jealousy. If you are feeling jealous, you are putting yourself in a state of having a low vibration. The reason why this is so dangerous for you is because if you have a low vibration, you are not able to attract your desires. You are staying stuck in one place with low energy. You are not the most beautiful, magnetic, attractive version of yourself. It is not about looks, it is about your inner being. It is about your inner feminine energy. So. When your uh, feminine energy is very, very strong, you have a high vibration. These are feelings of happiness, of excitement, of passion and purpose. You can have everything that you want in the world. You can be living your dream life. When jealousy pops up, it eliminates everything that you have. It eliminates the power of your desires. That's why it's so important to recognize. Your jealousy also disconnects you from your feminine energy. So the reason why I stress this is because when you are jealous, you are sending out negative energy. That is not feminine energy. It is wounded feminine energy rather than divine feminine energy. Your divine feminine energy is the top level of your feminine energy. You access this once you have done inner work, which we are doing through this video, and have healed parts of you that are triggered to really embrace your full and authentic self without any resistance. So. Jealousy, it unconsciously shows up in your face, in your body, and in your micro expressions. You might feel like you are able to control how jealousy shows up, but you are not. It is why people can feel it around you and it pushes them away. So not only does it give you a low vibration, but it also dims down the level of beauty that you can have. Jealousy is not a beautiful quality. Yes, it is normal and it is perfectly okay if you have it, but when you get rid of it, you can reach a new level of your inner beauty and your outer beauty. So when you are jealous, you send the message, I am not good enough. That is what you unconsciously believe when jealousy pops up. This is a place of the wounded feminine. As I mentioned earlier, the divine feminine woman do not feel jealous. They change it, rewire their brain, which I'm going to teach you how to do too. When you are disconnected from your feminine energy, you are then shifted into your masculine energy. 
Jealousy is a masculine energy quality. The reason is because it is directly connected to feelings of competitiveness, to feeling like you have to perform, to achieving. These are all masculine energy qualities. You need your masculine energy as a woman, but when you are constantly feeling jealous, you're constantly putting yourself in a state of being in your masculine energy. You want to use this when it's necessary, not all the time. Your other danger that is associated with the jealous feelings is when your blessings become blocked. So you could be living the life that you prayed for right now. You could have the relationship, the house, the career, the finances that you wanted years ago. You might not even feel alive, feel excited for it because you're still jealous and comparing yourself to other people around you. This also gives you that low vibration again. You miss opportunities in life. You're so focused on the lack rather than the abundance and you miss what God has for you. So an example of this is when I was in middle school, I really, really wanted straight hair and everyone around me had straight hair. I felt so jealous that my hair was so hard to do. If you have curly hair, you know what I'm talking about. Curly hair is very, very difficult to do, but it is 1000% worth it now looking back. I straightened my hair every single day, killed and fried my hair. I was blocking my blessing of having beautiful, curly, healthy hair. My hair took a long time to recover. It was when I made the switch in high school when one of my friends really encouraged me, Alexis, curly hair is beautiful. Why are you hiding it? This was a switch for me. I'm here to be that switch for you. Stop blocking your blessings, comparing yourself to others. Start embracing what you have. Moving on to the next point, how to actually stop feeling jealous. What you do is you rewire your brain to turn jealousy into excitement. If you did not know this, your brain is able to be rewired. You learn everything when you are a child, when you are a baby, that becomes your programming. So what I mean by this is society, your family, your friends, they all downloaded a program into you that you are currently running now as your software that is causing you to live a certain way. If that software was downloaded in you, you can download new software now. And this is what I mean when I say that you have the choice to rewire your brain, change the way that you think. So the inner work part that comes in here is self-awareness. Ladies, I swear you guys are the best subscribers ever because I see in the comments how self-aware that you are. You say things to me such as, I realized that I was mothering my man, or I realized that I was so focused on my lack that I was forgetting to be abundant. When you can call yourself out, you can grow. That is the first step to doing inner work. So when you feel jealous, here is what you need to realize. It is not the other person that is making you jealous. It is a part of you that is feeling a lack. If you can look at yourself the next time you feel jealous and understand this, you are extremely self-aware and that is a very beautiful quality. People are our mirrors. We are not jealous of them. They are not showing, they are not telling us that we are less than, we are feeling that ourselves when we are jealous. So what are you jealous of? And what does it say about you? If you need to pause the video and really think about that for a minute, that's going to be very healing and transformational for you. So an example, when I was younger, I used to struggle with acne. You guys know this, I used to have very bad breakouts. Sometimes I still break out. And I used to look at people around me who had beautiful, clear skin, no scars, no breakouts, anything. And I was so jealous of them. This was high school, early stage of college. And I felt so envious of them. What I did not know was that my feminine energy was getting destroyed every time these feelings of jealousy came out. I had to sit and realize one day, it is not the other people that is making me feel this way. It is me choosing to show up with the lack mindset. And I realized I felt I was lacking in a certain area of beauty. And it was beauty that society told us we need to have, that we need to have clear skin to be beautiful. I had to ask myself, is this a belief for me? Am I beautiful if I don't have clear skin? The answer is yes. And until I learned that, I constantly had those feelings of jealousy of other people with clear skin. And sometimes I would be angry at them. I would give them negative energy and it's not their fault. So I use that example to show you where in your life are you feeling jealous right now and projecting negative feelings onto other people. 
Another example is, let's say that you are jealous of people who are very wealthy and who have financial freedom. They travel, they spend their days doing whatever they want, and you feel that that is something you're jealous of. What are you doing about it? That is the first step, being self-aware. The second step, what are you doing about it? Are you working on building a business to have financial freedom for yourself? Are you disciplined? Are you learning and growing and expanding your mind to have a mindset to be able to handle and hold wealth? What are you doing about the situation that you are jealous of? The next step, expand and open up your mind. So when you see someone that you are jealous of, you have to remind yourself you are only seeing the tip of the iceberg. And I'll put a picture on the screen if you're watching this on YouTube to show you what I mean. You are only seeing the very top 10% of what someone is showing you. Let's say that you see a celebrity family, they're gorgeous, they have money, they're living a very popular, famous life. You are seeing the beautiful 10%. What you don't see underneath is the 90% of the struggle, the suffering, the negativity, the frustrations that they have to go through that you are not seeing. Remind yourself you are only seeing the tip of the iceberg in other people's lives. God gives you only what you can handle. There is a reason why you do not have some things that you really want. You would not be able to handle it. The Wizard Liz, she says this in one of her videos, if everyone went into a room, threw their problems into that room, people would go in and grab their own. You think that everyone else's life is so much easier, it is because you are living in that state of jealousy and it is not reality. Remind yourself that you don't see everything and be grateful for what you do have. Moving on to step number three, this is probably my favorite for how to overcome jealousy and eliminate it permanently. You know what, I'm not going to say permanently because you're still going to feel jealous from time to time. It's normal. It is going to become less and less when you do the inner work to get rid of it and heal and level up your life. So step number three, celebrate the power, the beauty, and the amazement of other women. This video specifically focuses on people who are feeling jealous of other women. So this is the number one tip that I have for you on how to reduce jealousy. You respect and appreciate the beauty in other women. So the way that you do this, let's say that there is a woman at the gym and she has such a beautiful, toned, healthy body and you tell yourself, wow, she's so lucky. She has just such good genetics or I bet she starves herself. Those are feelings of jealousy. You're comparing yourself, pointing out negativities in her because you feel a lack switch that in your mind to instead say, wow, her body is beautiful. I bet that she worked so hard for it and now she's inspiring me to do the same. My body is already beautiful, but now she's an inspiration for me to get to that level too. See how you switch that jealous thought? You turn it into appreciation and admiration of other women. Other women are not your competition. You are your own competition. Other women cannot take away what is meant for you. If you feel that other women are a threat, you need to remind yourself, nothing can take away what God has given you. When you live in a state of lack and a low vibrational state, you self-sabotage. You unconsciously push away the opportunities that you have because you do not feel worthy of receiving it. Sometimes you blame other women for taking away those opportunities for you when really it's you sabotaging them yourself. So. Celebrate the beauty, the power, and the amazement of other women. All it takes is that click in your mind when a jealous thought comes up to switch it into something else that appreciates her. This leads me into my next step. Learn to love yourself unconditionally. There's so much self-love advice on the internet. Here's what I have for you that I believe is the most important. You have to get to know yourself better than ever before. What parts of you are you currently hiding? Hold a safe open space for that part of you to come out. Maybe you meditate, you journal, and you really think, what parts am I pushing down? St true self-love comes when you love your flaws, you love the parts that you secretly wish could be different, and you also love your good qualities too. So here's an example for me. I personally hid anger and sadness over failed relationships with family, friends, romantic relationships, I always told myself, no, I'm fine, I'm over it. In reality, I was not. I had to journal and cry and let out those feelings and realize, you know, Alexis, I actually love those parts of you that 
that allowed the disrespect at that time, that allowed the mistreatment because they got you to where you are today. The parts of yourself that you're ashamed of and wish you could take back, embrace them. They are part of you, they're not changing. And they got you to the point where you're, where you're at today. Always make choices for your higher self. What time would she wake up in the morning? What type of discipline would she have? One of my favorite quotes of all time is, the highest level of self-love is someone who is disciplined. When you love yourself, jealousy is just naturally eliminated. You almost think it's crazy to want any other life besides yours. That is how I feel right now. I have not always felt this way. It is why I'm here helping you. I know it is possible to have that switch and to start loving the woman or the man, if you're watching this, that you are. So when, um, when, oh, you know what? This is actually the last step, and then I'll take some questions for you guys. So what you're jealous of is a desire that is available for you to have. This is a new mindset shift for you to have. So just like God gives you only what you can handle, he also places desires in your heart that are available for you. I do want to clarify, these are genuine desires that your soul has that also align with God's will. There's a lot of desires that you might be feeling, well, I have this desire and it's not happening. Is it a true desire from your soul? So the example that I have for you is when my life changed forever. And this was really the last point that I felt really jealous in my life. So it was before I had began my first serious relationship. I was 21 years old. I had never been in a relationship before and I honestly felt insecure about this. There was a point in my life where I looked at one of my friends and I saw her relationship and I felt so jealous of it. And I remember just sitting and crying and asking God, why don't I have this yet? I really want to be in a relationship. This was one of the first times in my life when I heard God literally speak to me. He said, Alexis, I do have someone for you. You have to be patient. He is available for you. And this switched everything for me. My mentality changed. I stopped being jealous of the relationships that I saw. I became excited. I became curious. I took that jealousy, removed it, and started being in a place of openness, living in my feminine energy, being excited for when this man was going to come into my life. He came into my life three weeks later. It was insane when this happened. I swear that quote, when you're not looking for it, it comes. I just started feeling good, living my life, began my first serious relationship a little bit after that with this man that I met three weeks later. The same exact thing happened for my sister. She was telling me she was feeling sad that she had never been in a relationship and she was in her 20s and I told her exactly what happened to me. You've gotta let go, it is for you, in God's timing, and it came to her very, very quick. So turn the jealousy into excitement. That is the main message of this step. As I mentioned to you, this point in my life was really the last time when I felt jealous and I had this mindset shift, which I want you to have so badly. So when you feel the feelings of jealousy come up, turn it into excitement. And if you really feel that you need an activity to help you do this, when you feel jealous, go and make a Pinterest board based on the desire that you have. Let's say that you're feeling jealous someone has a lot of money and is living a luxurious lifestyle. Make a Pinterest board about what your luxurious lifestyle will look like. Go and decorate that board. Make it look as amazing as you want and get excited. This puts you in a place of having a high vibration, helps you attract that desire into your life quicker. So focus on leveling yourself up become curious and excited about when and how the desire will come to you. So stop being jealous and blocking your blessings. Here's a recap of all the steps to get you there. So number one was rewire your brain and turn jealousy into excitement. Understand that you were not born jealous, you can change it. And the way that you do this is through the inner work task of being self-aware. Number two was to expand your mind. Realize that you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. Be grateful for what you have. Number three was celebrate the beauty, the power, and the amazement of other women. Send them good vibes rather than lowering your vibration with feelings of jealousy. Number four is learn to love yourself unconditionally. And number five, um, where did I put that one? Oh, understand that what you're jealous of is a desire that is available for you. I hope that you guys have loved, loved these tips. Now I'm going to take some of your guys' questions. I'm so excited to talk with you. Also, guys, head to my website. It's in the description. I have some very exciting news coming. Make sure that you subscribe to stay updated. And I, 
I have to just say I'm so, so grateful for every single one of you. I swear we are just at 30,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now we're at about 60,000. You guys send me the most sweet and loving messages. I appreciate every single one of you being here. Every like, every gift that you send me, it really, really means a lot. So thank you for being here and for being so open to this information that I'm excited to share. All right, positive energy finds positive energy, yes! What books do you read about God? I read the Bible every day, and I don't read any specific books about, or what was it? I don't read any specific books about God. I'm in a few Bible studies throughout the year, but um, if you have any recommendations, I would really love them. Another agreement point, ma'am, yes! <laughs> I've had women tell me it's lame for me to be into knowing my feelings. Okay, no, that is not okay. You are with the wrong woman. Trust me, it is perfectly fine for you as a man to embrace your feelings. I'm going to have to make a video about this because personally I believe men in touch with their feminine energy too and their emotional side are more masculine than the toxic alpha masculine men that you see today. So. Maybe do some inner work to ask yourself why are you attracting these women who cause you to push your feelings down and um, learn to embrace your emotions when they come in a very, very healthy way. It can be journaling, it can be exercising, screaming, crying, whatever you need to release your emotions. It's perfectly fine. Jealousy is so hard to overcome. So Susie, this could be a limiting belief for you. It's actually not hard. The only reason that it's hard is because you might be afraid of letting your old identity go. The old identity that is jealous. It is not hard to begin to change your identity. So rather than saying it's hard to stop being jealous, it's hard to do this, switch that with I'm excited to let this go. I'm excited for my new identity. Life gets to be easy. Life gets to be good for me. Needed to hear this. This is great. Thank you, Jacqueline. <laughs> I love that you guys have full conversations here in the live streams. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you're saying a woman who is protective can't be feminine? Mothers are protective of their kids. Um, Zephaniah, I never said that, girl. It's perfectly fine for you to be protective, or to be, pr yeah, to be protective. It's a major misconception that you don't need any masculine energy as a woman. You need your feminine and your masculine energy. You need a balance of it. Especially if you're a mom girl, use that mama bear energy. Any books or podcasts on wounded energy? So you know what? I don't have any specific podcasts or books on... Oh, you know what? There actually is a book that I just read. It's called Women Who Run With The Wolves. This is about the wounded feminine energy, the woman who has been caged up and restricted her whole life. So I would recommend checking out that book. It is really, really great. You are gorgeous. Ma masala. Thank you, Nahida. Thank you, girl. So Jacqueline, I struggle with being resentful when my boyfriend does not do things I see in online high value. So Jacqueline, it sounds like what you're saying is um, you feel that you feel upset when your boyfriend does not act in the high value ways that you are seeing online. I want you to also keep in mind that you are in a place where you're very open to personal development and growth right now. It might not mean that he is. And it's so amazing that you're self-aware to say that I'm feeling resentful of this. What I recommend for you, girl, is to express and appreciate to your man when he does things that are more high value. Well, let's say that maybe he opens up your car door. This is an action of a high value man, in my opinion, because he's caring for you. He's a gentleman in his masculine energy. Appreciate that. Maybe one day you just give him a kiss, a long kiss, and you tell him how much that means to you. Really appreciate the things that he does that are high value. They're going to encourage him to do them more. What's going to be your next video? I never know the answer for that because I literally make these notes an hour before I film and I always look through the comments, I talk with the girls that I coach and I ask what type of content do you want to see next and if I'm feeling it in that moment, I'll write about it and then go ahead and film it. So if you have any suggestions, go ahead and send them girl. Does it mean anything if a guy is not actively pursuing you but has introduced you to his entire family? So if he's not actively pursuing you, I would pay attention to that more than him introducing you to his family. 
look at consistent actions over time. Introducing you to his family, that is really amazing. But is it consistent that he is making it a point to take you seriously in his life? A man who is very genuinely interested in you, he will pursue you daily. He will communicate with you. He will not provide any sort of confusion for you. Thank you guys so much for all the roses and the gifts in here. <laughs> Try reading the Quran. It brings peace to my heart. Yeah, Nahida, I've never read the Quran. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm so sorry if I'm not. Um, I've never read the Quran. I'm really interested in studying all religions. Personally, I'm Christian, but I'm so excited and open to learn more and to understand other cultures. So thank you for that suggestion. Ooh, this is a good question. I've never been in a relationship where I ever get close to one. I get scared. How do I overcome that? So the way that you overcome that is exposure therapy. And what this means is putting yourself in that place where you are full of fear. So let's say that you are that you fear intimacy and you fear getting close to someone, allow yourself to get close to someone. Allow yourself to be vulnerable even when it's uncomfortable. The more that you push past this fear, the easier it becomes to overcome it. I would also recommend, Tushima, I hope I'm saying your name right, I would recommend reading the book Attached and focusing specifically on the avoidant attachment style. If you have an avoidant attachment style, which you might, you fear vulnerability, you fear intimacy because there's a deeper root of a fear of abandonment. So I would try to study, become so educated about the avoidant attachment style, see if you have it, and then work on healing that. Oh, I love talking with you guys. Every Friday I wake up so excited to come and live stream. Brenda, what are great ways and activities to love yourself unconditionally? I'm going to take one more question after this, guys, and then I've got to run. So ways to love yourself unconditionally. I love this because I like concrete activities to actually do this. So what you would do is have a gratitude journal. And in this gratitude journal, write three things down that you love about yourself every single day. Also, I believe that the key to loving yourself is building confidence, following your passions, and embracing your feminine energy. The way that you do this is by mastering a skill, becoming so knowledgeable and talented in an area that you are gifted in. So let's say that you have an entrepreneur spirit. Start to learn how to build a business and bring one of your passions to life. If your passion is fashion, if your passion is cooking, do something that aligns with that passion and bring it to life in a way that you can share it with other people. This builds your confident energy, it builds your feminine energy, and it helps you live in your passion and in your purpose. When you do this, you are truly loving yourself. Do you know of Joyce Myers? Yes, I love Joyce Myers. I do her devotion every single day. Okay, let's see. Oh, gratitude can help so much. Yay. My passion is her. I'm jealous of that curly hair. <laughs> okay, I love that you're saying this as we're talking about a jealousy video. First of all, thank you so much. But you know what I'm also gonna tell you too? There are ways for you to achieve what it is that you want. There are many curling wands that you can get. There are perms that you can get if you really want curly hair. Because trust me, I wanted straight hair years ago. Just to be able to brush my hair every day, oh, I can't even imagine doing that. The only time I can brush my hair is in the shower. Okay. So, ooh, good question, Diane. This is my last question, guys. How do you carry on a conversation without being awkward? The way that you do this is embracing your alter ego. Your alter ego is that side of you that you know is just the highest, best, most passionate, confident version of you. It can also be a celebrity who you really look up to. So for example, I love Rihanna's energy. She has beautiful, dark feminine energy. I embrace her persona when I'm embracing my alter ego. And what you do is you show up in that conversation as if you are her, thinking, what would she say right now? What would she do? How would she stand? Another tip that I have for you is to ask questions and be genuinely curious about who it is that you are talking to. Let's say that someone tells you that their career is in finance. Instead of asking, okay, what do you do? What's your schedule like? Ask them, what drove you to take and follow that career path? Were you always passionate about finance? What's the biggest struggle? What's the next goal that you have for yourself? Ask deeper questions in a conversation. That curiosity, it makes the conversation flow so smoothly because you are just genuinely being present and being excited to learn about someone else. This makes them feel good and it really lightens the mood. 
facts queen. Thank you guys. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you guys so much for all your support and for being here today. I am really excited to see you in the next video. I hope that you have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.